I guess as of right now with everything he's done, the only thing that's holding Patrick Peterson back um, from the Hall of Fame is the PEDs that he got caught with this past season. Uh, how you guys doing? It is uh, July 16, 2020. I hear this quarantine. I'm James Sims. And I'm just going to run you through Patrick Peterson, who up until this season was definitely a lock for the Hall of Fame as a cornerback by 30 years old. He's only 30 years old right now. I'm really curious as to see what happens with this whole situation. But um, I'm just going to give you a little, a little bit of background on who this guy is. Patrick Peterson is now the cornerback for the Arizona Cardinals. He wears number 21. I believe he's coming off suspension this year. But, of course, he comes out of Pompano Beach. He's six foot one, two oh three. If you ever see him play, he's a big physical corner, but he's incredibly fast and athletic, and he's incredibly nimble, able to stay with his receivers. He sways his hips. He has he's a, he's a very he's very intelligent. He knows he what you can tell he watches his film. You can tell he's very very dedicated and making himself better and better and keeping himself at an elite level every season. I imagine he, I, I imagine that comes out with playing in the same coming out in the same draft as Julio Jones and those two being super competitive with one another. But these guys, it feels as though these guys have been and these guys have been competing for who is the best player to come out of this draft. And Patrick Peterson has a very solid case for himself. So, um, this dude went on to go play at LSU. Where at LSU as a sophomore and as a junior, as a, as a sophomore in 2009, <clears throat> he would go on to finish as a second team All SEC corner with LSU. And he was named a first team All American, by the way. The next year, he was named the first team All American, our first team All SEC, and he was named a first team All American for the second time. He was given the Jim Thorpe Award and the Chuck Benedrick Award. And I guess. With everything he had done at LSU, he had earned the right to be the number five overall pick in the 2011 draft by the Arizona Cardinals, who the year prior were two. They were five and one, five and eleven. They had the worst record in the NFC West. So Patrick Peterson gets there the first season. He's there at 21 years old. Uh, he plays all 16 games, finishes with two interceptions, 13 passes defended, and he's already named a pro bowler and a first team, first team all pro in his very first year. And the Cardinals end up going eight and eight, but completely miss the playoffs. When someone does this in their first season, at this point, you have to acknowledge that they're elite at their game. For him to be 21 years old and establish himself as one of the league's best corners, as a pro bowler and a first team all pro corner. At that point, he's serious. That was his first year. His age, uh, 22 season, he ended up playing all 16 games, finishing with five fumble recoveries leading the year, finishing with 16 pass deflections and 17 interceptions, along with, you know, 55 combined tackles on the season. Arizona Cardinals finish 5-11, and worst in the NFC West yet again. But at the same time, Patrick Peterson was a pro bowler in his second season in the league. And that was his age 22 season. So in his first two years in the league, he, had, he has already secured nine interceptions, seven fumble recoveries, and he picks up two Pro Bowls and an All-Pro. In 2013, his third year in the league, he wins a third Pro Bowl, a second All, a second first team All-Pro. Um, he's additionally... Um, finishing with three interceptions and by this point he's already established himself as the best cornerback the most consistent cornerback in the league despite his team finishing at the bottom of the barrel every season but this year they actually went on to finish 10 and 6 but they still missed the playoffs on uh, the next year in 2014 his age 24 season he would go on to start all 16 games with been finished with seven pass deflections, three interceptions, 50 total tackles on the season. But basically saying as a lockdown corner he is, he ends up winning his fourth consecutive uh, Pro Bowl. You, you, you basically know the rest. But the Cardinals did actually end up making the playoffs this year, but they lost in the wild card game to the Panthers. But Bruce Arians won the coach of the year in his second year in Arizona. Um, in 2015... Patrick Peterson would finish up, uh, he would be a first-team All-Pro for the third time in, his, in five straight years. And actually with that, he was a Pro Bowler for, his, for the fifth time in his fifth time in, in his fifth year in the league. Um, at this point, he'd start 16 games. 
uh, finished with 12, or he started with, finished with two interceptions, seven or eight pass deflections, 35 tackles on the season. Basically, no one threw it to his side. And that year, the Cardinals would finish first in the NFC West, beating the Packers in the overtime in the divisional playoffs. But they lost in the divisional, the NFC Championship to the Panthers, based allowing 49 points, allowing them to go to the Super Bowl, but they eventually lost. And in 2016, um, in his sixth season, of course, he would secure his sixth Pro Bowl. Wasn't an, he wasn't an all-pro player. Oh, oh no. Oh, shocker. He finished with three interceptions on the season. He finished with six pass deflections. And he finished with 51 total tackles. And that season, the Cardinals would finish 7-8-1. and eight and one. They didn't make the playoffs, but Larry Fitzgerald won the Walter Payton Man of the Year. But at that point, they had... Following following their um, NFC Championship appearance, they hadn't made the playoffs since with Patrick Peterson has stayed on the Cardinals. And the next two years in 2017-18, his seasons would be the same in which he would secure Pro Bowls those years and going into this last season and including this last season where he would go on to start all 10 of the games in which he played in. He, he missed six games of the year because, of course, he got caught with human growth hormones, or I forget exactly what it was, but he was suspended. And for the first time in his career, in his ninth season, he had missed his first Pro Bowl, which is something he probably would have clinched had he been there. But had he did it, he would have been a Pro Bowl corner for nine straight seasons. But he didn't. He was still he still did it for eight seasons. For me, as of right now, I think he would have already been a first ballot Hall of Famer and he probably would have been penciled in as one of the GOATs. But as of right now, I can't give him that I can't give him that status. But if we're talking about is he an elite player? Most definitely. As of considering he's been a he he was a Pro Bowler for the first eight season, season seasons of his career. I don't know if I don't know how many players can actually say that in NFL history. Patrick Peterson is one of the few of them that can. Um in the situation that he's in, I imagine he's going to come back to the Cardinals, who have a lot of faith in their team now with Kyler Murray giving him options like DeAndre Hopkins on the offense. They're expecting him, along with other people, to kind of, with, with other players, to hold it down the defensive end. We'll see how it works here. Kyler Murray was the offensive rookie of the year, and they now have Cliff Kingsbury as their coach. I'm curious as to see how they deal in this division, especially with the LA Rams, um, for dealing with their Super Bowl hangover with the, Saint Louis, with the Seattle Seahawks who have no depth at any of their positions, and the San Francisco 49ers, who were just in the Super Bowl last year. So it's really curious. I like to see how they do better than 5-10-1, which is what they did last year. But Patrick Peterson, as an individual, looking back in his nine years, he has eight Pro Bowls and three time, three All-Pros. If you're looking back and you're going to ask me who is the best cornerback of, of the 2010s, it was definitely by far Patrick Peterson, considering he never... he rarely had a bad game for him to be as consistent as he was from age 21 to age, to his age 28 season. That's all I really have to say. Thank you for getting the chance to listen to all, for, for just listening to these nine minutes when you get the chance. But if you watch the Arizona Cardinals, check out my boy, he's wearing 21. And when you watch him play, really ask yourself, if you if, if watch him play against the best, the player who you think is the best receiver he's going to play against this season. And really ask yourself, like, is this dude playing it while he's playing? Is he is he winning this matchup against the player that I consider the best receiver he's going to go up against this season? If you have the chance. And, what, and with that, I just got to peace out. Thank you.